today. AMD's Ryzen 3D crushes Intel at this. There's a new Intel GPU. I've got to buy a better PSU. NVIDIA is using something pretty awesome to make their RTX 4000 cards. And AMD and NVIDIA parts may soon be made by Intel. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD's new Ryzen 3D is here, and by now most of you have likely seen the 5800X 3D reviews. And don't worry, that isn't what this is, it's really only focusing on one key difference, but before I get to that, I do want to go over quickly the performance. Basically, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D tends to trade blows with the 12900KS in gaming, though mostly winning out depending on the game. It, it really depends on a few factors, like you can see both having a 3090Ti, the 5800X 3D wins out, but really they're pretty neck and neck. Obviously, when it comes to more professional workloads with the 12900KS, having more cores, it isn't even a competition, but obviously that CPU is significantly more expensive than AMD's and AMD isn't really billing it as a great all around CPU. It's primarily focused on gaming, but there's actually one metric that really shows when AMD decided to take the 3D vCache route, it was the right way to go versus Intel just upping the clocks. And that when we move down here, you can see is power consumption. Igor's lab did a really great comparison with the gaming benchmarks that they did where they compare the average power consumption between these CPUs while gaming. And as you can see at 720p, the 12900KS, depending on the GPU, gets up to a whopping 143 watt power draw. But when you compare that to the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D at its highest GPU power draw, which is actually a different GPU, which is sort of odd, but it it only gets 60.9. That is a whopping 39.4% of the power draw that the 12900KS needs. So in terms of efficiency, to get right around the same performance, the 5800X 3D pulls it off much better than the 12900KS. And of course, if you're interested in purchasing one, and of course, if you're interested in purchasing one, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. But before I move on to the next thing, really quickly, one interesting story is the fact that MSI is set to enable BCLK overclocking for their X570 MEG motherboards, which means you can get up to 7% higher single core performance. Nothing really massive to write home about, but it is pretty interesting. Okay, I actually think I, and it's gone. Again, I mean, I was barely late this time. This is seriously. If you're like this guy and you keep missing out on a sweet new GPU because you're just a couple minutes late or you forgot about that awesome PC hardware sale before it was over. Well, don't miss anything ever again by joining the GamerMail notification squad, where I'll send you a notification when major PC hardware gets released, as well as some great deals. And the best part is that it's free. Plus, while I do send it via email, don't worry, you won't ever get a bunch of spam or anything like that. I'm mostly focusing on major hardware releases and deals like CPUs, GPUs, new chipsets, etc. Because let's be honest, it's tough to keep up with even important releases with all the noise out there. So let me do it for you. Simply visit the link in the description and sign up for the GamerMail Notification Squad. It's free, so you've got nothing to lose. Next up for today, originally from Enthusiastic Citizen and later reported by Video Cards, it looks like Intel is actually working on yet another desktop ARC GPU, specifically the ARC A310. Now, given it uses the 3 moniker and it's even lower than the A350, this is obviously set to be a fairly low-end GPU, but it's pretty interesting because it's apparently set to offer similar performance to the recently released RX 6400. So this is definitely a very low end GPU and like I recently discussed, if the rumors on Ryzen 7000 APUs are correct, it would pretty much completely replace all of these lower end GPUs. Some more budget friendly builds could ultimately go away with discrete GPUs and just use the iGPU in the APU, but of course that is later on in the future. As of right now, this is at least fairly interesting. And while moving on to the complete other end of the market, we have NVIDIA's AD102. For those who don't know, the AD102 is set to be NVIDIA's next-gen Ada Lovelace, and this would be their highest-end GPU that would make up the RTX 4090, 4080, 4080 Ti, all of that. 
Either way, in a recent video by Moore's Law is Dead and later reported by WCCF Tech, we can see that they are planning for the RTX 4090 to consume up to 600 watt TBP. And of course, we've heard this number before, 600 watt total board power, which is the wattage for the entire card, including the VRAM and all of that. Either way, we have heard this number before, but it seems like it's becoming more and more solidified. And really quickly, I will actually reference a pre previous video where I mention anything over this because you have a 600 watt TBP and the newest PCI Express 5.0 connectors deliver 600 watts, therefore anything over would require another connector. But I do want to make a correction on that. I don't know what I was thinking when I said that. Obviously, the PCI Express 5.0 slot should be able to deliver 75 watts in and of itself. And therefore, you won't need a second one for, you know, 10 watts over for slight overclocking and things like that. But even when it comes to the 3980Ti, plenty of cards still have those two connectors. So obviously, with the TBP being significantly higher with the 4090, I would expect a ton more cards to come with two of these connectors. Either way, next-gen GPUs are set to be some massive power hogs. And while on the topic of NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs, the company revealed something that's pretty interesting. Specifically, that they're actually making their next-gen cards using AI and machine learning. When we go down here, you can look that they actually do some comparisons with certain aspects of creating the GPU using AI and machine learning gets the job done significantly faster, which obviously means you get things out quicker or at the very least things end up being much better because you have more time to work on it. As you can see down here, we have a few examples, mapping voltage drops, parasitic predictions, uh, specifically the mapping voltage, implementing AI and machine learning increases accuracy by 94%. So basically all of this just means that NVIDIA was able to leverage AI and machine learning to take certain aspects of creating GPUs and speed up that process significantly. And at least from what it sounds like, NVIDIA's next-gen Ada Lovelace or their RTX 4000 cards were developed in this way. And lastly for today, we have a really interesting story from PC Gamer that shows us both AMD and Nvidia could be using Intel's fabs to create their GPUs, CPUs, etc. in the future. According to this, uh, and someone did already discuss this, it was Seeking Alpha, but the title was pretty absurd. Taiwan Semiconductor is likely finished, referencing TSMC, but that really is an absurd title, and at least from what PC Gamer says, they actually say that they're an Intel bull and they're holding a long-term stake in uh, the company, meaning Intel, so I definitely don't think TSMC is in any real big trouble, but we can see down here, it says uh, we were expecting the N3 node to launch in 2022, but now it's expected to only be used in products in 2023. When we move further down here, it says TSMC is getting the tools to build chips for companies for the N3 process, but there are reportedly issues, so that may potentially move back even further. Not only that, but the N2 should have then been available if we look at that 2023 date in 2025, but now it's looking like in 2025 production will begin, but that would suggest that the products won't actually come out until we're into 2026. Basically, TSMC looks to be having some issues as well as delays in some of their future process nodes, while at the same time, Intel is getting very aggressive about getting better and better process nodes over the future. So if TSMC does in fact have these delays, and especially if they get any worse, there's a chance Intel could supersede them and have the much better nodes. Therefore, AMD and Nvidia would more or less be forced to use them. And there was actually a report just a month ago that says NVIDIA is in talks to use Intel as a foundry. So this looks like it could already be happening, though it could easily be due to the shortages and things like that. But if Intel sticks to their nodes, doesn't have any delays, which is probably not all that likely, but if they don't, both AMD and NVIDIA could seriously end up using Intel in the future. So while that does it for today, I do apologize that I rambled so much in this video, but let me know down in the comments what you think about Nvidia and AMD potentially using Intel as a foundry. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.